Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. My name is Lizelle and today I'm going to be doing a first impressions on the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation. So as I'm sure most of you guys are aware, NYX recently came out with their newest foundation. I know this isn't that new for those of you guys who are overseas and have easy access to NYX. Over here in Australia, this foundation just hit shelves because we get everything like six months later than the rest of the world. But yeah, NYX came out with this foundation and they call it the Total Control Foundation because basically they say that you have complete control over the coverage that you want to have. So you can have a sheer, build it up to medium and even go as far as full coverage when it comes to this foundation. I actually did purchase this foundation online a couple of months ago and I'm only just now getting around to doing a first impression because the shade that I got was a little bit too dark but I figured like just deal with it just work with what you got so if you guys are wondering which shade I chose for myself this is the shade beige and I'm pretty sure this is going to be a little bit too dark for me but that's okay we will work with it so I'm just gonna go ahead and read off the NYX website what the claims of this foundation are and like a little short description of what it is. So it says, from sheer to full, your ideal coverage is just drops away with our new Total Control Drop Foundation. Fine tune this velvety matte foundation with the included dropper. Simply adjust the number of drops until you create the look you're feeling today. <laughs> Want more coverage? Add more drops. Buff expertly using the Total Control Drop Foundation brush for a seriously smooth finish. So I personally did not buy the particular brush they suggested just to use with it because I feel like I have so many different buffing brushes. So for today, I'm going to test it out with the Real Techniques Expert Face Brush and I'm also going to try out the Beauty Blender because you guys who watch my channel regularly would know that I pretty much use a Beauty Blender for all my foundations. So this is what I'll be testing out for this foundation today. So in this foundation, you'll be getting 0.43 fluid ounces of product or 13 mils, which is kind of like, well it is, it's a lot less than what most drugstore foundations are. Most of my drugstore foundations that I have in my collection come with about 30 mils of product. So this is less than half of what a typical drugstore foundation would come with. So it'll be interesting to see just how well this foundation covers and whether you would have to use a lot of product considering the fact that it doesn't come with as much as most foundations. As far as the actual bottle itself, it's this um, frosted glass bottle and like they say, it comes with a little dropper. So I am going to go ahead and apply this to my face. I guess I'm just going to like squeeze some into the dropper and then just drop it onto my face. <laughs> I'm scared. Oh my goodness, okay, that's scary. <laughs> it's watery and as you guys can see, this is way too dark for me. It has a super, super, super like yellow orange undertone, which is good like if you have an olive undertone. Okay. That was probably about half a drop that I used. It did spread out and cover a lot. But it ain't my color. I am just putting this on half of my face to start with because this side of my face is not primed. So I will go ahead and prime the other side of my face when I do get around to doing that side. All right, so half of my face is done with one like layer. So that, that was about half a pump of the dropper. I'm going to go ahead and apply primer. I'm just using the NYX Angel Veil Primer on this side of my face. Alrighty, primer is on. Now we can drop another little drop on this side of my face. It, it scares me how watery it is because I'm scared it's gonna drop onto my clothes. Like I just flicked it onto my clothes. It's super spreadable though, like it, you can t spread it out a lot. So I guess a little does go a long way. If this was actually my proper color, that would be great. I was kind of hoping that perhaps it would kind of blend into the skin and not be so noticeable, but it is like a little bit too dark and that's just a fault on my behalf. So just ignore that guys. I, say, I would say that I'd have to go like a shade lighter just one shade lighter if I wanted to get my right shade. The coverage is pretty good, guys. Like, I would have to say that I used one 
pump, like one dropper for my entire face because I did half and half. So yeah, a whole dropper full of product on my entire face and it's covered everything up really well. And all that product has like spread out over my entire face, but it hasn't covered up this little sucker right here. I do have a little bit of a blemish going on here today. So I will go in with another layer just to try and cover this bad boy up. In terms of application, buffing brushes are really good when it comes to spreading out super watery product. But I will try doing the second layer with a beauty blender just to kind of see how it goes and whether the beauty blender sucks up a lot of product. All right, again, actually I'm just gonna tap it on the areas because Dropping the product on like they do in Instagram videos, that scares me. <laughs> so I've blended in the foundation and to be honest, I don't think the Beauty Blender would be ideal for this. Like they did suggest on the website, use a buffing brush. So yep, goodbye Beauty Blender. That's a first. Usually I always prefer a Beauty Blender to apply foundation but with a product that is as watery as this one, buffing brushes are the way to go. I'm super shocked at how far it spreads out. Like it's just insane how much you can spread the product out. All right, so I'm done with applying the product. I did actually go ahead and blend it down onto my neck and chest because like I said, I got the wrong color. Also, I forgot to mention that this product does retail for $14.95, I think. Let me double check. So yeah, it retails for $14 in the US, but here in Australia, if you're looking to purchase this, you can find it at Priceline for $24.95. Yes, that is a big markup, but everything is much more expensive here in Australia. So yeah, in terms of product wastage, I wasn't wasting any products because a little Definitely does go a long way as you would have seen the tiniest drop spreads out a lot and in terms of coverage of the foundation Yes, I totally do Go by what they say when they say that you can have it sheer or build it up to full I have to say today my coverage is kind of looking like a medium because you can still see some redness poking through um, with these couple of blemishes that I have going on on that side of my face We'll just have to see how it wears throughout the day to see whether it is a worthy foundation for me I personally do have an oily skin type and also the finish of it like they did say in the product description It is very matte like but it's not dry matte. It's just Looks like your skin like it's just a velvety matte finish not super like Matt. Anyway, I am going to go ahead and finish off the rest of my makeup and I will come back when I'm done to update you guys. I just finished applying the rest of my makeup on my face and I have to tell you guys, usually I will go ahead and like set the foundation with powder. Even when I do first impressions, I always feel the need to set my face with powder. But for this foundation, I didn't feel the need to do that. So I haven't set the foundation. I have set like my concealer underneath my eyes and in my T-zone, but I didn't set the foundation. So that's something new. So far, I really like how it looks. Even though it wasn't my right color, I was able to somehow make it work. But yeah, the finish is great. It still has that really nice velvety, matte kind of finish it doesn't look too cakey on the skin and yeah i just really like how it looks on my face so what i'm going to do now is i will go ahead and go on with my day and i will check back in with you guys in a couple of hours just to give you all an update on how it's been Alrighty, i am back it has been about five hours since i applied the foundation in that time, I have not touched my face up. I actually kind of forgot that I was doing a first impression, so I haven't even checked my face to kind of see how it's been settling on my skin. So at this point, I'm going to take a look in the mirror and we shall see what my reaction is. Okay, so at first glance, um, it's looking a little bit shiny, like in this area of my T-zone, but in all honesty, I personally don't really mind that. I don't want my face to be completely matte, but I don't want my face to be an oil slick. So I honestly don't mind that it's looking a little bit dewy. Actually, when I'm looking in the monitor and I can see like how my face looks on camera, I really don't mind it. I'm sure you guys can kind of see the expression lines that I've got go like, uh, there's a little bit of creasing on my forehead is what I'm trying to say. And um, a little bit of creasing around my laugh lines. 
but I actually don't mind the way it's sitting on the skin. Like I said in the beginning, it's not matte, but it's not oily. It's just like, yeah, just my skin. What I'm gonna do now is I'm about to have dinner. I'm so hungry and I'm cooking something at the moment. So I just thought while I'm letting this cook in the oven, I'm gonna quickly sit down and film an update. But what I will be doing is continuing on. It is now the evening. So when I'm ready to go to bed, I'll catch up with you guys then, so I'll see you then. Okay guys, I am back for my final update. I've been wearing the foundation for about nine-ish hours at this point, so I'm ready to shower, take it off, and go to bed. But before I do that, I need to have a look in the mirror and see how it held up throughout the day. So, it's still the same, like, there hasn't been much of a difference within the four hours since I last checked in with you guys at the five-hour mark. It still looks the same, like, as it did in my expression lines. I did mention earlier that it had slightly settled into like my laugh lines and a little bit on my forehead, but honestly, nothing too crazy. I always get that with most liquid foundations. And we also have to take in mind that I did not set my face. Typically, when I do first impressions, I always want to set my face with some kind of powder. However, today I didn't feel like I needed to. I'm sure you guys can see what I'm seeing at the moment and I know it definitely does look a lot more dramatic on camera as I'm seeing in the monitor. My face does look oily, especially in this T-zone area. I feel like with this whole lighting situation setup that I've got going on, it kind of enhances what I see in person. In person, it honestly doesn't look that bad. However, on camera, like, Check my nose highlight, that's really popping, and I feel like the oil has something to do with that. And it also has caked up my nose, caked up my nose, caked up around my nose a little, but in all honesty, that is totally inevitable, especially for me personally. Whenever I wear a liquid foundation for a long amount of time, I always find that at the end of the day, it's always caked up around my nostrils because that is just like where I'm Oh, I just hit my face. That is like where I'm most oily is definitely in this area of my face right here. So yeah, I'm not, I'm honestly not mad about it. Like it's not a big deal to me. So my final thoughts. I like the fact that it was really lightweight and I loved the fact that a little went a long way. It definitely, definitely is one of those foundations where a little goes a long way. And I'd have to say that, yeah, you totally do have total control over it because you can kind of build it up to whatever coverage you want. I also like the fact that I didn't feel the need to set my face with any powder because I felt like the foundation kind of set itself and it gave a really nice finish when I had just freshly applied it. And to be honest, I feel like it's lasted on my skin really nicely throughout the day. At this point, the only negative thing that I have to say about it is that the shade that I picked is too dark, but that's nothing to do with the foundation, that's just me like not being good and choosing the wrong color for myself. So I'd have to say if you guys are wanting or interested to try out the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation, it's definitely worth trying out. I can definitely see myself continuing to use this in the future. However, yeah, I'm gonna have to get a shade lighter because yeah, I think this is a pretty worthy drugstore foundation to try. Like I did say in the beginning, for those of you guys in the US, it is $14 for us here in Australia. You can pick it up from Priceline for $24.95, which is still pretty good for a drugstore foundation. There are other drugstore foundations for us here in Australia that cost a couple more dollars, so that's not too bad, honestly. So yeah, that's the end of this first impression, guys. I really hope you do enjoy it. If you have any questions about the product or just in general, don't hesitate to hit me up with a comment down below and I'll be sure to reply. If you guys wanna follow me on any of my social media accounts, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and now Facebook, because I recently made myself a Facebook account. All of my details will be down below. And with that being said, I hope you guys are having a fabulous week and I will catch you all in my next video. Stay glowy.